Welcome to today's video. As you guys can see behind me, we are back at Yashio factory as you can see because we're doing another video on the S15 rebuild. If you're just tuning in right now, we are rebuilding my S15 from the ground up pretty much. New paint, new body kit, um, painting the engine bay which we never did last time, fully forged HKS engine build. Like I am really excited. We're aiming for 500 horsepower, really cool Garrett hot side and stuff like that. But as you can see, the weather hasn't exactly blessed us today. So we're gonna do everything that we can. Probably gonna like uh, grind down the uh, piston rings, get them on the pistons, the wrist pins and con rods and get everything sorted for when the crank arrives early next week so that uh, things will just be easier and quick from there. But it's raining, I feel like a hot coffee. So we're gonna go to 7-Eleven and get one real quick. Ooh, this is a tough decision. Do we go the Rainbow Boys or the Emerald Mountain? Yeah, Emerald Mountain. I really hope this weather gets better. Because I really wanted to start working on pulling everything out of the engine bay today. <sighs> Please stop raining. Anyways, we got ourselves our coffee on the big GT carbon wing. Hey, it's my coffee time, lads. Woo! <sighs> so what we're working on right now is getting all of the piston ring clearance perfect. Um, we're very fortunate that with the HKS kit and because we're using a stock bore, a lot of these are going to be pretty spot on and we're not going to have to grind them too much. But uh, these piston rings have a really small marking here. You probably can't see it on the camera. It's really hard to see. And this tells you that this is a first layer uh, piston ring. And how you check is you want to put this into the, the bore here. It's a little bit of a fumble sometimes. Once you get that in there, you then go and use one of the pistons that you have and kind of like push that down so it's nice and level. And then we'll get our feeler gauge out and HKS says that you should have anywhere from 0 0.30 millimeters to 0 0.40 millimeters you want to see. And when we check this one here, we're smack bam on 30, which is perfect. You just got to check that little clearance there. Now, just for the sake of triple checking, I'll try and put like a 0.35 in there just to see, but I think we're gonna be fine. Yeah, perfect. It does actually go in. So, a little bit nicer and super easy. And then obviously each ring, once you've gone and measured it in each cylinder, you gotta keep it in that order because there could be a slight difference between the bores when you check them. So make sure that, you know, if you've checked one ring in, piston, in cylinder one, that's now paired up with cylinder one. So, yeah. Let's get the rest of these done. We should be good to go. To your second ring. And then this is the next one. So we'll start on these. Different marking again, 2T here. So this is the second ring. Mm. And this one's a bit stiffer than the top ring. We'll slide that in. And we've got my 30 feeler gauge here. No problem. Let's check out 35. Some more? And my son. Son? Check. Mm, mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. So that's perfect. Now we're going to take this one out, and that's going to go in our pile with number one cylinder here, and we'll keep going through and moving through each individual one. Taking a quick moment to tell you about today's video sponsor, which is Dafsky. And as you can see behind me, we are at the park to check out the beautiful sakura trees in full bloom. And here's the best thing. Dafsky is an online store dedicated to selling only the coolest and sickest air fresheners for your ride. And we collaborated together to bring you a Japanese authentic sakura scented air freshener for your car. This clips onto your AC vent. And as you can see, the S15 and the sakura trees are there in the background. It's super cool. I hope you guys love it. Head to dafsky.com. Go grab yourself some as well as some of the other air fresheners and your car can start smelling like 
it does right here in this park right now. The sucker is seriously amazing. If you don't know what it is, it's the cherry blossom trees here in Japan and it's a huge seasonal thing. And it pretty much, I mean, I don't know if you can see behind me, but you can see a lot of people under them drinking and having parties with friends and stuff. It's a huge cultural thing. With that guys, let's get back to the video. So we're now done with the rings and we've got all the pistons and con rods out. And I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison with the factory ones and show you the weight difference. But just off the bat, right out of the box, these are so identically weighted. Like it is, I'm blown away to be honest. So let me show you. Um, first things first, let's go through the HKS Conrods. We've got 5556, oh sorry, 556.1. 556.1, the same. Five hundred and fifty six point one, the same. This is this is crazy good. Five fifty six point one. All the same. All Nazi, then all Nazi. So this is like incredible. Honestly, normally this is not the case. So we're pretty pretty mind blown. Then let's look at the factory one, right? So we were getting what? Five 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 six point one. Six hundred and thirty three point eight. So we're looking at about, what's that, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80. Hapaku, mm. So we're looking at about 80, so 80 gram difference between the OEM ones and the uh, HKS ones. So 80 grams lighter on the HKS ones and these H-pattern ones are stronger. These are forged, so this will handle a lot more power. Then let's look at the OEM piston in comparison. Looking at 361 grams, 0.2 compared to one of these HKS ones, 358.4. So we've got a little bit of a difference there, tiny bit lighter, but that's perfect. So let's now go through all of these. This settled on 358.3 358.3 Everything is perfectly balanced. Kanpeki ne. Sugoi HKS. Futsu janai ne. That is not normal. I have I have opened up a lot of aftermarket um forged internals and they've never been identically weighted like that. So HKS is really on another level. That's amazing. It's like all pre-balanced. That's perfect. I'm really excited about that. So yeah, we're gonna go into now and probably start connect putting the connecting rods onto the pistons and we should be good. So what I'm working on right now is prepping these pistons. And uh, what Okachan went and did was got some 1200 grit emery paper, sandpaper, and we're going over every sharp edge that doesn't have a taper machined on it, just to, you know, take off that sharpness and uh, help it when it's going in that bore for the first time, as well as hopefully nothing kind of like gets nicked or anything like that. It's just good practice. He said like, the machining process is probably perfect on this and you could probably just put it straight in, but it's just not worth the risk in his opinion. And uh, he is the SR God, so I'm gonna take his advice. The other thing I noticed about these pistons that I'm really impressed with is, see this notch that's been cut out here in the piston? This is specifically for the oil squirters. This, this means that this isn't gonna come in contact with the oil squirter as it comes down in the cylinder. Now, this used to be a pretty big issue, especially amongst the RB guys. A lot of aftermarket piston manufacturers never used to make that clearance point there. And uh, they'd have issues with forged pistons coming in contact with the oil squirter, knocking it off, damaging the piston, and a whole bunch of other issues. So people started spacing the oil squirters. Don't have to do that with these. HKS thought of that, so I'm pretty hyped on that. So what we're working on now is doing all of the rings. We have the instructions here from HKS. Everything has to be at a certain angle so that they don't like all meet together because then you'll lose compression, right? So this goes on a particular way. We get that ring there, line that up with the chart and what it says. So that should be about there. And then put this guy on. Oil rings you can do by hand. Uh, the other rings you need the special tool. Mm. So for the oil rings, there's three in total. 
It's a little bit fiddly, but you kind of get used to it after a while. Okay. All right. Now we're on to the next one. So we get our T2, 2T marked one. This needs to go up to. This goes in a special ring tool. We open this guy up, slider in. Shall we get that lined up? And then release. And that ring is now in place. But we need to adjust it and move it. Second ここだよ. To here. Yeah. The second ring goes there. And then the top ring gap. This tool is kind of difficult to use. There we go. And then this one. Is in the top one over there. Okay. Number two done. Mm. Okay. Now on to three. Finished putting all the rings now on all the pistons. It's pretty therapeutical. And uh, now we're getting ready to install the wrist pins. Okachan went and grabbed his. Yes, guys. He he's that much of a baller. He bought a snap-on hot air gun. So there's a first that I've ever seen that and did not know that existed. And then we got our snap rings here, our wrist pins, and uh, we're gonna get these puppies all set up. Yeah, normally you can push them in by hand. If not though, you can just use a, like a little flathead drive screwdriver. So now what Okachan is doing is heating up the con rod and the piston a little bit. So that it's gonna make our life a lot easier pressing these in. Oh, that's right. He's really excited about his uh, snap-on heat gun. And when I asked him how much you paid for this, he said he can't remember. <laughs> and he doesn't know. <laughs> All right. Let's line that up. Oh, slips right into place. Wow. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> he loves this. Psycho da ro? Psycho. Psycho na do kore ga. Demo ikura. Ikura da ka wakaranai. He doesn't know how much he paid for it. Oh man. Ah. I can't get over the quality of this actually. I'm really impressed. All right, well, that's two done. I'm gonna keep working through and get them all done. Uh, one thing to note is this is the top facing of the engine. So this is the front of the engine and this logo has to match with that so that everything's in the correct position. Okay. So finished now assembling everything here with the pistons and the con rods and we're kind of at a stalemate waiting for the crank to come back at this point. Um, I started working on the block a little bit and cleaning and scrubbing it a bit. I also kind of decked the top with the sharpening stones to get all that gasket material off so she's all pretty and ready now. Um, I'm still obviously going to do a lot more cleaning on this. Um, we've got to go through and make sure every crack and crevice is perfect. Head's just sitting there waiting now. We did get that extra valve stem seal here and uh, I got that valve and everything in there. I put my lifters back in there which are soaking in oil. You'll probably see a bit of it there. But we've just got everything chilling right now, waiting for when my crank comes back, which hopefully start of next week we'll get it back and we can assemble this thing and put it all together. <sighs>
I'm also pretty pumped because Okachan's placing an order for a 370Z manual transmission for me. We've got the Mazworks uh, bell housing conversion kit coming for that and a serial nine shifter. So that's gonna be the drivetrain we're gonna be running. It comes with a uh, propeller shaft or tail shaft and all that kind of stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is probably change out my shafts to D-Max ones, which are good for like 800 horsepower to 1,000. And the bolt pattern on those shafts will suit any kind of like R200 stub axle. So you can go the normal six bolt one, you can go the Skyline five bolt one, or you can go the GTR six bolt one. So either way, you can make that um, axle work with any stub axle. It's a new day, back at Yashio factory, and it's time to start stripping this engine bay. I'm gonna pretty much set up a time lapse and just start pulling everything off that I can. Um, it is very hot today, so I kinda had a big PP move and I backed the K-Van up here with the, uh, the hatch up. And then that way, we've created ourselves some nice shade so I can work here and not die in the sun. Um, so, enough of that, let's get started. So an update now, I've got pretty much a whole bunch of stuff removed on this side, as well as on this side. Um, I removed all the power steering lines, I got um, all the wiring harness like pulled out on this side and all the vacuum lines and stuff that were there. You can see that like my power steering leak that was kind of just weeping there the whole time just kind of clumped up there with a bunch of dirt. So we'll definitely need to clean that all off. Um, all the power steering lines completely removed all the way to the rack. Um, we got a brand new kit from Chase Bays that's going in. Um, I want to cut out the battery tray and stuff like that. Um, and I've just been removing a bunch of wiring and hoses and stuff like that that just didn't need to be in the car from like whatever the previous owner had wired in that I couldn't really remove until we had stuff out anyways. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I think I want to relocate the harness and bring it on the inside here too. So there's a bunch of stuff that we need to do, um, but obviously we have to wait till, uh, you know, this stuff gets painted. And you can kind of see as well, the previous owner really bashed out this here to get a little bit of a tub going on. So I'll probably bash those out a little bit more as well. We're not going to put tubs in because one of the restrictions for D1 lights, if you want to use a car for D1 lights, is you cannot have tubs you have to keep the factory ones there so everyone just bashes them with a hammer um, so we'll try and make that a little bit nicer before it gets painted and stuff like that but otherwise pretty big progress for today i'm really happy um, i'm also super exhausted because working outside in the heat kind of killed me but uh it just reminds me of florida to be honest i couldn't leave this engine bay looking this dirty so we're gonna pressure wash it I love pressure washing engine bays. This made such a difference. It's gonna make it a lot easier for me to work on tomorrow and uh, not get as dirty. Hopefully only just one more day and we should have the rest of this whole thing stripped out ready. Back home now guys and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Obviously with the delays with the machine shop and getting the crank back and whatnot, we're kind of limited to what work we can get done. Um, but not gonna stop me from chipping away at everything we can. So we got the pistons and the con rods all sorted out. Started working on stripping the engine bay a bit more. We got a lot we still need to get done. I wanna have this car within a month back on the track and ripping at five to 600 horsepower, whatever power figure we make that's reliable and safe with all the uh, supporting mods and things like that we're gonna be doing. <sighs> I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait to feel what this car's gonna feel like at that power level. Um, things keep escalating a little bit too, you know? It's like, oh, well, since we're here, we might as well do that. Um, and I'm trying to like 
cap that down as soon as possible because I do have another rebuild planned for the S15 uh, in a year's time or maybe less. But uh, that'll just be like an entirely another insane level. But for now, I'm trying to just keep things as modest as I can and not blow the budget too much. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Smash the like button, write us a comment and subscribe. Make sure you're following me on all the other socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Ciao, Marta.